Well, it, it was a manifesto promised by the Conservatives not to put tax rates up. So the only lever they really had to raise taxes in this difficult environment was to play around with the thresholds and allowances. So starting with allowances first, we had the dividend allowance and the capital gains tax exemption at £2,000 and £12,300 respectively. Those are going to halve and then halve again. So the dividend allowance is going to £1,000 in the 23-24 year and then £500 in the 24-25 year. The capital gains tax exemption is going to £6,000 in 23-24 and then £3,000 in 24-25. That means lots of people who came out of self-assessment, so we're talking about possibly pensioners because their, their, their income, uh, savings income in particular, or within these limits are going to fall back into self-assessment. If they don't keep an eye on that, they're going to um, fall into penalty by needing to file a tax return and, and not filing a tax return simply because they don't know the rules have changed. For the actual thresholds, um, there's just been an overall freeze. So we knew that thresholds are being, being frozen for a while. They're now most of them frozen up to 2028. That's the income tax thresholds, national insurance thresholds, and very importantly, the inheritance tax thresholds. So when we're seeing, even in this market, some property uh, growth, so people's main homes are growing in value, there's no corresponding increase in the inheritance tax exemption, which has stayed at the £325,000 level for as long as anybody can remember. That is going to collect the government quite a lot of tax. So these, these freezing of thresholds um, are, are big budgetary measures. The employer's national insurance threshold, for example, being frozen at its current level is going to collect £5 billion a year, which is about 10% of what the Chancellor needed to raise. So these are big measures that are happening really behind the curtain. Well, we were warned in the few days leading up to the budget that those with the greatest ability to pay will be paying more tax in the future, and we had a good idea how that was going to be achieved. So the 45% tax rate it disappeared for a while, but came back only after a few days. Uh, the threshold has always been 150,000. That's now dropping down to 125,140 pounds. Now, there's a very good reason that the, the, the figure set at that slightly unusual level, because that's the threshold at which the 60% tax uh, rate, the effective 60% tax rate stops being payable. So we've got a tax regime where the tax rates are 20, 40, 60, and then 45, which is slightly bizarre, but that's where we've ended up. For the very high earners, the maximum additional tax they're going to be paying is £1,243, so about £100 a month. Um, it won't be any higher than that because that's effectively the additional 5% on the 25000 or thereabouts bracket that they're now paying more tax on. Um, it does mean that those who are now falling into the 45% tax rate are going to lose their personal savings allowance. So that was previously lost at 150,000. That's now lost at the 125,140 pounds rate. So that 500 pound allowance is going as well. Um, slightly unusual though, when you compare the last year's figures, the 22-23 figures to uh, what it will look like next year, um, higher earners are actually better off because they won't be suffering that short period of higher national insurance. So carrying some of the burden, perhaps not as much as everybody was expecting. Well, we had a pretty strong suspicion that something was going to happen to R&D. Um, we knew uh, a lot of reports in the press around the level of fraud in R&D uh, claims, and also we knew when uh, the Prime Minister was Chancellor, he was on record of saying he didn't think in particular the SME scheme was particularly good value for money. It wasn't driving much R&D activity. So what we've had is the SME scheme has been made less generous and the RDEC, the large company scheme, has been made more generous. Under the SME scheme as it stands at the moment, for every £100 spent, a company could get back £33.35 in, in relief. Uh, that's going down to £18.60 uh, in relief. So that's a more than 40% drop in the generosity of that scheme. On the other side, for large companies, what they're getting back at the moment is about £10.53 for every £100 of expenditure. That's going to go up to £15, so we've got a 40% increase. What we're seeing here is um, a convergence of the scheme. So uh, the SME scheme will become less and less generous over time. I, I expect the large company scheme will get marginally more generous. And at some point, the SME scheme will cease to exist and everybody will make claims under one scheme. There'll be one scheme for the revenue to police and hopefully they'll get to grips with the level of fraud in the system at the moment. The tax regime being very generous towards electric car owners uh, is starting to turn a little. So we've got two measures announced in today's budget. 
One is the exemption from vehicle excise duty for electric cars will end from April 2025 onwards. So if it were a newly registered car from April 2025 onwards, there'd be £10 payable in the first year, and then the normal rates would apply, so £165 a year. If it's an expensive electric car, so over £40,000, there'll be an additional £355 to pay on top of the 165. So the duty could go up to £500 a year for some people. We've also got a change to the benefit in kind tax uh, system for electric cars that's been very generous and has encouraged electric car ownership uh, on a wide scale for, for many employees. Um, the benefit in kind rate has been 2% and will remain 2% up to uh, 5th of April 2025. From that point onwards, it goes up 1% a year until it gets up to a 5% rate. So not the end of the world, it's still a very low rate for company car tax. If you're at the top end of the spectrum driving a, a, a Porsche taken, you're still only really looking at just just over £160 a month in company car tax, but this will continue to creep up as electric cars become more the norm than the exception.